What's up guys, Rogue9 here and I'm back with some more Rainbow Six Siege experimentation. This time I'm attempting to find out the elusive damage rating for Buck's modular accessory shotgun system. A roll intro. Now this video has been a long time coming. Rainbow Six isn't very forthcoming regarding the damage rating of any weapon really. All we ever get is the maximum damage a weapon can do for a body shot. So that's the damage the weapon will do at the closest range before any drop off against light armor. And of course those figures can be relatively meaningless but at least there is something. On the other hand, when it comes to Buck's Modular Accessory Shotgun System, or MASS, we have no data at all. That is, until now, because if the game won't provide the data, I will do whatever it takes to get it for you. Or at least, I'll give it my best shot. Before moving on to the results, let's take a quick look at the experimental setup. Take one friend, use the ping functionality to measure the distance between you and fire one shot at the chest in order to measure the damage done. Well that's pretty simple right? Wrong. It is a pain in the backside, let me tell you that. There are a few problems when trying to measure the damage done by the shotguns and those quite significantly restrict some of the conclusions we can form. First of all, we have the issue that every shotgun in the game fires a total of 8 pellets. So there is always a question of how many pellets hit and where did they hit. To try to control for this, I always performed each test in front of a clean wall and counted the number of pellet strikes in the wall afterwards to know how many shots hit. So far so good, but if you have multiple pellet strikes on the body, the question is where did they hit? Did they all hit the body? Did a couple of them hit the arms maybe, or even the head? The only way to control for that is to repeat the test over and over and over again and then average out the damage done. The second and more significant problem is that you cannot establish the maximum damage. And this really is the measure that we're after since it's the one that's used in the game. But if you try to establish maximum damage with a shotgun, you simply end up dying with one shot. So with those limitations in mind, let's now take a look at the results. I will be focusing on the results for light armor since that is what is used by the stats in game, but the issue I ran into is that at about 7 meters distance, hits ended up resulting in one shot kills, i.e. no useful data. So in order to try and extend the data as close as possible to the maximum damage, I also ran the trials for heavy armor and then calculated the damage reduction which was around 20% as it has been established for other weapons in the past. And this then allowed me to get down to a distance of 5 meters. At this distance, even with heavy armor and using Doc's overheal functionality to go to 120% health, many shots aimed at the chest resulted in a one-shot kill. And I suppose that really is the first interesting bit of information that we can really go with. Any distance below 5 meters and you stand a pretty good chance of killing your target in one shot. But we'll get to number of shots to kill later. So let's look at these damage figures first. Now these are per pellet, and I will be comparing these figures to the only reliable shotgun damage figures we have, and that's the figures that were released by Ubisoft to highlight the changes during the semi-automatic shotgun nerf. But of course, even though these changes weren't all that long ago, there have been further changes since then. Luckily though, the max damage for these shotguns has been reduced by a pretty consistent 6%. And so I've gone ahead and reduced the rest of the data by 6% as well. Is this definitely the way that the shotguns were nerfed in the last round? No one knows, but for the purpose of our discussion it will do, because there is a clear theme that we can identify when it comes to shotgun damage and shotgun damage drop-off. The greater the max damage, the steeper the damage drop-off. And this is perfectly illustrated by the Saiga 12 and the Spaz 15. The Saiga's max damage is 47, but by the time you reach 15 meters distance, it's only 13. While on the other hand, the Spaz 15 starts out at only 28 points of maximum damage, 
but even at 20 meters distance, it still does 15 points of damage. That's two more than the Saiga has five meters closer. So keeping that concept in mind, how does the mass fit in? Well, the data suggests that it doesn't quite fit in. The max damage I managed to extrapolate for light armor at 5 meters is 31 points per pellet. And that would put the mass in with the group of the lowest damaging shotguns in the game. But when we then compare the damage drop-off with other low damage weapons, such as for instance the Spaz-15, we can see that the damage drop-off seems slightly faster for the mass. And when you consider the way that Ubisoft have described this weapon, that makes perfect sense. The mass is in fact not really supposed to be a weapon in the first place, but rather a breaching tool. In fact, come to think of it, I should really do a video testing the different breaching capabilities of all of the shotguns, including the mass. Yeah, I think I might do that. But let's stick with its capabilities as a weapon for now. Damage per pellet at various distances is all well and good, but the metric that really counts is how many shots does it take to kill your enemy. But there again, we seem to have come upon what has sadly become the main theme of this experiment, the limitations. Whether an individual pellet does 12 or 14 points of damage is not really that important. What is far more important is how many of the 8 pellets actually hit your target. So understanding the pellet spread at various distances is crucial. But while conducting all of these experiments, I found out that pellet spread is not only a function of distance. In the game, if you attach a laser to your weapon, it will increase hip fire accuracy. And rather bizarrely, that will also tighten up your shotgun pattern. You can then go beyond that and tighten up your pattern even more by aiming down the sights. And I even managed to confirm that attaching an optical sight with a greater zoom to your shotgun will tighten your spread pattern even more. Of course, in real life, none of this would make any difference. So the answer to the question of how many shots does it take to down your opponent at distance X is really, it depends. If you're firing from the hip without a laser, the spread on the mass is huge, and you will need to fire significantly more shots compared to aiming down sights, especially with a high-powered optic like the ACOG. So the takeaway should really be, if you have the time to aim down sights at your enemy, go ahead and do it. And this, by the way, goes for any shotgun, not just the mass. And even with these confounding variables in mind, I still think there's no real point in drawing up a table of how many shots to kill at which distance, because with the random patterning of the shotgun pellets, it is still impossible to guarantee a certain number of shots to down your opponent at a certain distance. So there you have it, I conducted more than 70 trials to end up with fairly reliable damage per pellet ratings for certain distances, and while I think that has allowed us to compare the mass with other shotguns more closely, there still remain some fairly significant limitations in terms of the conclusions we can draw from the data. Now all of this has been fairly technical and theoretical, but I hope you've still enjoyed the ride. I'm actually quite excited about testing the breaching capability of all the different shotguns. Now that experiment should really deliver far more useful results than this one. If you're interested in seeing the outcome of that experiment, make sure you subscribe to the channel. In the meantime, if you want to see other Rainbow Six Siege experiments, go ahead and give that playlist box on the right a click now. And with that guys, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode. If you like.